Hi guys, welcome back. Um, this is the part two of the structural analysis video. I saw you guys comment. I saw how you guys have been able to maximize uh, the opportunity shared in the video. And of course, in the part two series, this will be very short because I'll be showing like the example of everything that I explained there. And also, additionally, I will be talking about um, when you have your four hour and one hour aligning with the weekly and daily bias, that is the short-term bias aligning with the long-term bias. You know, in the uh, schematic shared in the first episode, we literally spoke about the four-hour and one-hour having opposite bias that is bullish as against the weekly and daily, which were bearish. And that is actually the first example I will be showing, the type of example I will be showing is that, mm -hmm. all right? So here, I will be sharing you the screenshot of different time frames aligning with each other and from there we can now look at the other one which is um a scenario whereby the short-term bias that is four hour and one hour aligning perfectly with the long-term bias if they are bullish and the weekly and daily also bullish or if they are bearish and the weekly and daily also what also bearish but in this particular example the weekly is bearish daily bearish and the four hour, one hour bullish towards the supply of the weekly. And of course, we also will see how you will take your sell when price gets to that particular daily and weekly um, supply level. Without further ado, let's dive into it. All right. So, on this is the weekly time frame. All right. And for the weekly time frame, you can see this is the weekly break of structure. Okay. Um, let me change that color. Okay, so this is the weekly break of structure, all right? I told you guys, based on our second rule, that once you have a break of a significant low, that is what establishes the trend. So what will we register this particular weekly as? We'll register it purely as what? As a bearish trend, okay? So we'll register this as a bearish trend. All right, and without further ado, we'll go to the next one, which is the daily. And here we have our daily. What do we notice on our daily time frame as well? Significant low broken and no significant high was rated, okay? The high was not rated, so it is not bullish. It is also bearish. So significant high broken, daily BOS, DBOS, all right? And therefore, daily will also be registered as bearish. All right, great. So, which means we have our long-term bias, which is daily and weekly, to be bearish. So, both of them align to give a bearish bias, all right? Now, let's go to the four-hour and one-hour time frame, and let's see what we have there. But before we go there, let us ensure that we mark the weekly supply and the daily supply, where we expect price to uh, buy into, in case four-hour and one-hour are bullish, all right? for continuation of their bearishness because that is what will set the target for the four hour and one hour bias. All right, here, as you can see, here we have the weekly supply, quite a little bit large, all right? How do we mark it? Because this is a drop and this are basically, even this candle is a base, yes. I measured it, the body of this particular candle is less than 50% of the whole range of the candle. If you have not seen my supply and demand series, I will urge you to watch it on my TikTok uh, page, that's double underscore Andre, or my Instagram page, also double underscore Andre, all right? So there you will get to understand how to mark supply and demand very well and accurately. So this is relatively a drop. All of these are bases and then a drop, okay? So all these three guys are bases and those are your so they make up your weekly supply zone, okay? So the next thing you want to do is what is the daily supply zone within the weekly supply zone because that will be the refinement, all right, to target as final target for if price is, uh, if we are having a short-term um, bias for four hour and one hour as bullish, okay? So then the question is, uh, what is the daily supply within this weekly supply range, all right? And here we have it. When we get to the 
weekly supply based on our law of supply and demand as taught in the videos I recommended. We notice that this right here is a daily supply, this grain area. Also, this particular uh, base can is also a daily supply. And I urge to you guys, I told you guys in the first episode of the structural analysis video, I told you that by the time you are entering your cell on weekly supply, uh, on the daily supply within the weekly supply, that it is always advised that your stop loss should be at the distal line that is above the weekly supply area, all right? But that's, by the way, that's not the first thing we want to do. The first thing we want to do is to see what four hour and one hour, what they are saying. If they are saying bullish, if they align as bullishness, we now know that our target straight up for the buy will be to the daily supply level as the final target. We'll first take a first profit at the touch, once price touch the weekly supply, and the final target will be the daily supply within the weekly supply. And I told you relatively, that automatically always make all this high your liquidity. It makes it structure, can help you build liquidity, can help you understand liquidity better. And we'll see in this particular example. All right, here we have it. This is our four hour time frame. All right. So on our four hour time frame, we have a, a, a high, a low, then we have a lower high. Then we have a lower low, this right here. All right, I would like to zoom that. So we have a lower low, a lower high, and then another lower low. Then price now break this particular lower, what? Lower high, this last lower high right here. All right, so by price broke this particular lower high right here. So we have a four hour break of structure already, which means that four hour is what? Is bullish. Since four hour is bullish, the next thing we want to do is to plan our trade towards the weekly supply. And how do we do that? We first confirm if one hour as well is bullish. And we can see clearly that one hour is the same. Lower low, lower high, lower high. Then we have our lower low and the lower high. And one hour also break that same structure. So one hour is also bullish. Okay, so now we have a bias for the short-term bias, which is bullishness into where? Into the daily slash weekly supply level above. All right, having done that, then the next thing is we'll mark our one-hour demand level. Our demand has already been reacted to. This is our demand. These are four-hour demands, you can see. We have that rally. Okay, so basically, these are four hour demand. We have that rally, that base, and then another rally. So this is the four hour demand where we'll be buying from. So having marked the demand, the next thing will be the 15 minutes and five minutes in order to what? In order to take the buy. And I also told you, you can actually stop on your one hour, four hour, and four hour by just entering your trade straight up at the demand level of four hour, putting your stop loss below the distal line of the four hour. All right. And then since it's a swing trade and you still have a good risk to reward, target this. But of course, if you love over refining, which is not good, then you can have your final uh, you can have your final trade right here, just as seen here. What do we see? This is that same area, same thing over and over again. So on 15 minutes time frame, we're having a low, all right, into the demand level. A high, rather, a low, then lower high, and then lowest low. And then price reacted from the four-hour demand, aggressively reading the last lower high right here, where I write 15 minutes break of structure. All right, so after that has been done, what will now happen? So the next thing is now to take the trade at the 15 minutes demand, also using the 133% of your zone rule, which is this red line, as your stop loss level. And as you can see, price went and rallied all the way. Or you could have even taken your buy right from this four-hour demand, right from this four-hour demand. This gives you even much more peace of mind. And then you would be able to uh, uh, take your trade all the way down there and put your stop loss just below the distal line of the four-hour. And what do we have? The bullish move all the way to the weekly zone. This, so this is your first target, price tapping the weekly zone. And finally, the daily zone. But that is not all, right? So the next thing you want to do, remember, what is now the long-term bias? 
you take the same step over and over again for your, uh, for your long-term buyers, which now means that in this case, you have to look for what? Your short-term buyers must be bearish inside that particular weekly slash daily zone. It must be bearish there. That is four hour and one hour so that you can now sell all the way back to the external liquidity that is all the way back here. Your goal is to, what we did was to buy, all right? Um, so what we did was to, what, was to buy all the way into the weekly daily supply, all right? So your goal when price gets here is to sell back to this external because your long-term buyers is that price is bearish since there is a weekly break of structure back to this external liquidity. That's the old goal, all right? And that is the final thing that we will have, all right? So what do you do? Then look for sell, which is the long-term buyers after your buy target. So you enter your sell, your stop loss above the distal line, of the weekly supply and your target right here. Okay, so that is that. And of course, I said, I will talk about when we have and which I want you guys to practice. In subsequent videos, I will show an example on that. It is very possible here that what we would take would be a sell. How will we know that? That is, if around this area, if for our, instead of breaking a structural high, all right, let me make that bigger. If around here, if around here, if our did not break a structural higher, if instead for our becomes bearish, all right? And one thing you should notice that a basin candle, when a candle is basing, that is here, yeah, the weekly time frame is still basing. These are two bases. After a drop, these are two bases. It is very possible to have a continuation right from this base, a continuation of sell downward there. So all you need to look for there is what is happening here in four on four hour and one hour time frame. That is, if four hour and one hour time frame didn't give us that bullish intention, bullish intention is what makes us know that we are reversing to the weekly supply above. Bearish intention here on four hour and one hour will signify that we are to sell more downward to the next uh, possible maybe weekly demand thereabouts. I believe you guys enjoyed the video and you have learned a lot. Comment below how this particular structural analysis video, how it has helped you to see the market better. And I will see you guys on the profitable side. Bye.